If you haven't done so, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. What we want to do first is label the wires with 1, 2, and 3. We can call the top wire 1, the bottom wire 2, and the wire on the right 3. Now we're going to calculate the magnetic field at point A first. And to do that, what we want to note first is that we have four right triangles that are all sort of connected together. And you'll notice that these right triangles are actually isosceles right triangles because two of the legs are the same. And in the case of isosceles right triangles, we know that the hypotenuse can be represented as the side times the square root of two. So the distance from wire one to A is going to be A radical two. The distance from wire two to A is also going to be A radical two. And then we can see the distance from wire three to point A is going to be one, two, three A's. Now, we know that we can calculate the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire by using the equation shown on the screen. What we'll do is set up the magnetic field calculation for the three wires. And to do that, what we'll do is attach subscripts to both the current and the distance for wire one, wire two, and wire three. Remember, we're looking for the distance to point A in this part of the problem. We can fill in the currents as they are all given to be two amps. And then we've already noted that the distance for wire one to point A and wire two to point A is A radical two. And then again, from wire three to point A is three A. So we'll plug in those distances as well. So here is all the information carefully plugged in. Again, note that the distance for wire three is three times the value of A. Also notice that we had to convert the one centimeter into meters by moving the decimal over two places to the left to make 0 0.01 meters. So that would be the value for A that you see in the formula. We can pick up our calculators and process these three calculations. And for wires one and two, you should get a magnitude of approximately 28 times 10 to the minus six Tesla, and then wire three produces a magnetic field of 13 times 10 to the minus six Tesla. Next, we need to consider the direction of the magnetic field produced at point A. And to do that, we're going to have to consider a right-hand rule. So to use that rule to figure out the direction of each magnetic field at point A, what you want to do is go and notice that each wire has the current pointing out of the plane of the paper. We know that because the currents have the dots located in the center of each wire and the dots indicate that current is flowing out of the page. So what you want to do is stick your thumb out of the plane of the screen, basically pointing towards yourself, and make a fist with your fingers, essentially. And you'll notice that your fingers would be moving in a counterclockwise fashion. And so try to imagine wire one producing a magnetic field in a counterclockwise fashion at point A. So if we kind of make a circular arc that's going in a counterclockwise fashion, it might look something like that. That's pretty crude, but that would be the magnetic field produced by wire one at point A. The key thing to note is that as that magnetic field is circling in a counterclockwise fashion, when it gets to point A, it's going to be pointing exactly along this line right here. So this would be the direction of the magnetic field produced by wire one. We can call that B1. Now, similarly, wire two, gotta put the labels back on the wires, is producing a magnetic field that's going in a counterclockwise fashion. And so when the magnetic field line kind of circles its way over here to point A, right there, it's going to be pointing exactly along this direction. So that would be B2. And then we have wire three also producing a counterclockwise circular magnetic field. When that magnetic field sort of arcs its way over here and onto point A, it's going to be pointing straight downward. So that would be the magnetic field B3. Now let's recall that this was an isosceles right triangle right here. So that means this angle is 45 degrees, making this angle 45 degrees as well as this angle and in fact that angle. They're all 45 degrees. Let's go ahead and draw a new picture that hopefully better represents what's going on at point A. Now because these are vectors, what we need to do is break them up into their x and y components. So let's do that for B2 as well as B1. And after breaking the B1 and B2 into their respective components, we can actually get rid of the original magnetic field lines because we really only need to be dealing with the components. 
Now, remember that the magnitude of B2 and B1 was the same. We can see that off on the side here. That means that this X component of B2 is going to cancel with the X component of B1. And so all we're left with are the three downward pointing components of the magnetic fields. So we're simply going to add together B2 sine 45, B3, and B1 sine 45. So you can type that into your calculator, these three vectors right here. And when you do that, you should get roughly 53 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla, which of course is 53 micro Tesla. And the direction as noted would be downward because all three of those vectors are pointing downward. So you could say towards the bottom of the page for the direction. Now we'll calculate the magnetic field at point B. Once again, we're going to use the same formula. We can notice that the distance from wire 1 to point B is just A. The distance from wire 2 to point B is also A. And then the distance from wire 3 to point B is 2A. So let's set up the three magnetic field calculations. So here are those setups. Notice that the B1 and B2 are the same because their distance to point B was the same. So we've set up the calculation in a more simplistic manner. When we pick up our calculators and process these, we get approximately 40 micro tesla for the magnetic field produced by wire 1 and wire 2 and then approximately 20 micro tesla for the magnetic field produced by wire 3. And of course now we move on to the direction at point B. Remember the magnetic fields are all still traveling in a counterclockwise fashion. So wire 1 produces a magnetic field that circles over here and then is pointing exactly to the right. Wire 2 going counterclockwise would be producing a magnetic field going exactly to the left. And so those are actually going to cancel out. And then wire 3 would be producing that counterclockwise magnetic field that would be pointing straight down. In essence, the three magnetic field vectors would look like this. Remember, the magnitude of B2 and B1 is the same. So since they're pointing in opposite directions, they're going to cancel each other out. Therefore, the only magnetic field component acting at point B is the magnetic field produced by wire 3. So the correct answer for the magnetic field produced at point B is going to equal 20 micro tesla again towards the bottom of the page. And so there is the correct answer. We'll move on to point C now. And there's sort of a trick going on here at point C, or maybe something unexpected. And before we set up all the calculations, we actually want to note that the magnetic field here is going to be zero, in fact. And let's take a look at why. Consider wire one, whose magnetic field again is going counterclockwise. So as it circles around wire one and gets to point C, it's gonna be pointing off in that direction here. Wire two, again, producing a counterclockwise magnetic field would have a magnetic field line that's circling around and when it gets to point C, it's gonna be pointing off in that direction. And then wire three, producing a counterclockwise magnetic field would have a magnetic field line that's circling this way and when it gets to point C, it would be pointing straight down. So in terms of a simpler diagram or a cleaner diagram, we would have the magnetic fields pointing in these directions. Now let's note that the distance from wire one to point C is that A radical two, and the distance from wire two to point C is also A radical two, and the distance from wire three to the point is just A. Coming back over to this diagram, let's note that when we break B1 into its X and Y components, and then also B2 into its X and Y components, the X components are going to cancel each other out. So all we're left with are the two Y components. So therefore we can call that Y component on B1, B1 sine of 45, and then B2's Y component will be B2 sine of 45. Therefore the total magnetic field at that point can be written as B2 sine of 45 plus B1 sine of 45 and then minus B3. We say minus because it's pointing downward. We can actually factor out a sine of 45 from the first two terms. And now we'll go ahead and fill in the expressions for B1, B2, and B3. And then we'll fill in the known value for the current as well as A. And you want to carefully now plug that all in and I do assure you that when you do so you end up with a magnetic field equal to zero Tesla. So the magnetic field located at point C is actually zero. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send your own question to the email address on the screen and I will do my best to answer it on YouTube.